Hey guys, Mike Toy, Bonsai Boise. So this is my new grow tent that I just got this year. I think I put it all together maybe a month or so ago and I've been meaning to do an update and just kind of show you how everything looks here. So far I'm real happy with it. So let's open it up, take a look inside. I'll show you how the lighting is set up and then we'll do some updates on some of my indoor tropical trees while we're at it. So come with me and let's step into my little tropical jungle here. Voila. So it's actually got two doors. I just undid the first one here. So here it is. So it really does kind of have this like tropical jungle feel as it's getting cold and everything outside. It's the first week of November. Pardon the two uh, killer French bulldogs here that decided to fight right next to me. Anyway, so if you watched any of my videos from last year, I had Similar setup, but not as good. I had a just a greenhouse and it was three feet by nine feet by three feet deep. This one is four feet deep. I think it's six feet to its top. It's either five or six, can't remember now. And uh, nine feet long or wide, I should say. So it's much bigger. I can kind of double deck here. I got the bottom row and then the top row. And the videos from last year would show you the lighting system here that I used. I'll try to put a link to that video in here. Um, so I just used the same lights and then I had some other grow lights that were being used in a secondary smaller greenhouse from last year. And I put those at the bottom. And so far things are growing great. They've all been in here for about a month and uh, yeah, it's going really good. So I'm going to pull some of these out now and uh, give you an update on everything. But let me also show you my new way of watering. I just use this guy here. So the, the funny thing about this is that this makes some kind of high pitched noise that the dogs hear and they just hate it. It's just like the war cry for them. They hear that noise and they're like, what? This is so much easier to water this way compared to filling up a water bottle over and over and over. Plus it helps, I, I think at least it's gonna help with um, humidity because it kind of sprays it out more which helps with aerial roots. Whoops. So anyways, that's enough of the watering system. Let's pull some of these out and take a look at them and then um, we'll go from there. Follow me. All right, so the first one on deck is my dwarf pomegranate. I'm gonna try to keep this video sort of narrowed down to just some of my most recent projects just to give like a quick update of each one, maybe a minute or two on each. So starting with this dwarf pomegranate. Right after I did the repot uh, a few weeks ago, I put it next to a window and the leaves turned yellow and started falling like a lot, like alarmingly a lot. So I put it in that greenhouse and as you can see now, it's just taken off. The reason I didn't do it right off the bat is because pomegranates typically prefer a little bit of a drier environment. I didn't want to put it in a humid greenhouse, but as you can see, it's apparently loves it. So glad I did it. So it's doing real well, real happy with it. Next up is Sheffy, a uh, 
Dwarf Shiflera. One of many Shifleras that I have, but I did a repot on this one. Uh, been a few months now, three, four, five months, something like that. It was in a much smaller pot. I've had this now for about five or six years, and it started as part of a clump that I got at a big box store and took apart. And uh, it was much smaller then, didn't have all the aerial roots. Since then, it's grown quite a bit, grown a lot of aerial roots, and it outgrew its little pot. So I repotted it into this. It didn't bounce back immediately, which had me slightly concerned. But as you can see now, it is bouncing back quite a bit. And if you look closely, you might see a couple of ladybugs in there. I've added a lot of ladybugs to my greenhouse, which is something I would highly recommend. Here's a couple of my tiger bark ficus. I have a lot more small ones, cuttings from these two mostly, but these are the two main ones. I call them Benny and June. Benny is the straight one. June is the S shape. Let's look at June first. June fell off the third uh, floor balcony last summer on a very hot August day. Got home and there she was laying there out of her pot, roots exposed, pleading for mercy and help. So I put her back in the pot kind of frantically and she's got this lean to her now, as you can see. Leans back and then toward the top, kind of she kind of leans back to the front towards you. So I don't... I don't hate it. I kind of like it. Here's Benny. Looks like a good shape from there until you turn him and you can see got some branches kind of being unruly. I've always had trouble with this one doing what I hope it will do with branches. It's It never wants to cooperate. So this is the front here and uh, they're always either crossing or you know just one thing or another. So I've been slowly chipping away at it structurally. I could just accept Benny for what he is. But no, got him wired up. Here's this guy. Honestly, can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. Um, it's just started as kind of like one of those indoor plants. Um, I'll post the name of it because it's, it's escaping me right now. But uh, I did a repot on this about a year ago, I think. It was sometime like last fall, I think. Um, not much to say. I've given it a couple of little trims since then. But it really likes that greenhouse, as do uh, all the other plants. I gotta say, that greenhouse or, or grow tent has just been amazing. It's so much better than the greenhouse I had last year because of the reflective walls and blocking out the light so there's not a big glow in the middle of the dining room. The only problem is that it's this big black monstrosity taking up the whole dining room. But you learn to live with it. This is my work bonsai. It's just a regular ficus benjamina. Um, I call it my work bonsai because it was at my office for the longest time. It just kind of grew in the windowsill. And it's still my work bonsai. It's currently in the greenhouse. I figured it deserved a little bit of the, the bright lights in there. It's doing well. I've got it wired up to kind of help the branches along. But I'm happy with its progress. It's even got some little, I guess that you'd call them aerial roots. Um, kind of like root base aerial roots, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I didn't really want a lot of crazy aerial roots coming off of the branches. Just wanted sort of a straight, elegant looking tree. But I'm okay with some root base aerial roots. You see there that wound right above the second branch from the repot last year. It's doing real well. I'm happy with the structure. Made some big cuts when I did the repot last year. And it's turning out to be okay. So I'm very happy with it. Not much else to say, just giving a little progress update. Let's look at some more interesting ones. My two little leaf ficus, similar to the ficus benjamina. 
except it, they call it a too little leaf because the leaves are much smaller and curlier. Talk about a structural nightmare. It's a cool tree. I love it. I really do. But it's a work in progress. So you can see right there that big ugly wound right on top, right up front. And I'm still not done. As you can see, you know, oh, look at the little ladybug there. Hitch and ride. But you can see basically all branches. You got like, I don't even know how many, 10 branches, 15 branches coming out of one spot. Big no-no. So I'm chipping away at it little by little. I think I'm going to mostly let it grow throughout the winter. I might give it a little trim depending on how crazy it gets. It's got a cool root base. If you watched the repotting video, um, you saw I basically cut the root base in half. This is a, uh, I got this at Costco. I call him Thor. It's a big mighty tree. This one has never been in the greenhouse. It has always just been in the windowsill, I think, as far as I can remember, at least. See a couple of big scars there. See that one? And then one next to it there, to the left. So that one and that one. And what those are, I believe at least, is when they are young and in training, they just tie them to a stick to give it that S shape. And then what happens is they just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and eventually grow into the stick. I had one of these once, might have even been this one, where part of the stick was still in there. It was like a little bamboo stick. But otherwise, this has been a really cool tree. It's just got a lot of cool character. So big and thick. It's, it's got a good root base, so got some good root player down there. Very green foliage. Just a happy, healthy tree. And that was only 40 bucks at Costco. There's the big wound where I did a... It was just a... I think when I got it, it was just kind of like a stump up there. So I'm trying to chip away at it so that it blends in more. So that's Thor. Thor is doing well. Willow leaf ficus. So that one there that I'm holding in the red one, that's the a cutting from the main parent tree. So we'll put the cutting aside for a second. I did a repot on this about three months ago-ish. It was not doing well. It had barely been clinging to life for like a year. It was down to, I'll bet, 15 leaves. I mean, and they were old, you know, old looking leaves. So nothing I did worked. Um, so finally I just repotted it. That's kind of like an emergency Hail Mary. And right after I did, it just took off. So I don't know what the problem was in there, in that soil, but that's all I wanted. New soil. As you can see, it's doing real well now. It's flushed out with growth. It's kind of heavy on that side. That's when it was on the balcony. That's the side that was facing the sun, I think. So I'm going to try to uh, rotate it a little more so it gets a little more sun on the other side. In the, well, in the greenhouse. Got a few ladybugs in there. Once again, adding ladybugs to your greenhouse, even inside, is the way to go. At first, I was worried that the ladybugs would get out and there'd be ladybugs all over the place, but there, there's not. They have no incentive to leave. They stay in the greenhouse. Occasionally, you'll find one walking around, but they're harmless. This is my ficus benjamina, my ficus fusion. It started as just three ficus benjamina cuttings about five years ago that I sort of braided together. And then, for whatever reason, I just kept it going and decided, ah, let's just fuse them together. Structurally speaking, it's flawed, but it's not supposed to be pretty yet. I had a bag over it for a while, for a few months, I think, maybe less. And as you can see, it produced a lot of aerial roots. That plastic bag trick works like a charm. I eventually took it off because I didn't want it to mold in there or anything. Um, so a lot of those aerial roots, just the smaller ones just dry up and die. But as you can see there, the, the fusion is doing well. I'm gonna do a more detailed video on this coming soon. 
where I, I do a trim and we take the rubber bands off and we really get a good look at the fusion. But here's a sneak peek. You can see they are fusing together. The one thing that I learned from this that I did wrong that I'll, I'm doing different from now on is I'm not going to braid them together. It just creates all kinds of holes and gaps and problems. What you really want is three of them or more going straight up and down. I'll bunch together. That way there's no gaps. So, you know, you live, you learn, you experiment, you learn stuff. So hopefully anybody out there who tries it can learn from that. The braiding trick looks cool at first, but it makes it hard to fuse. So here's an update, more ficus benjamina. The one in the middle, I did a video last November, about almost exactly a year ago, called Bush to Bonsai, where I bought this big ficus benjamina for 20 bucks off Craigslist, I think it was. And I hacked it all down to a bonsai. So the one I'm holding now is one of the many smaller fusion projects. I've probably got a dozen or so of those smaller ones that I'm just experimenting with. And when they do fuse together, I'm going to take those dozen or so and try to fuse them together. It's just something fun I'm doing. And that's just regular Teflon tape, like plumbing tape. But here's a look at the, the main, um, that's the main course, I was going to say, <laughs> of the bush to bonsai video. I air layered. You'll see the big wound down there right at the small part of the V right there. And I still have the air layer. It's doing well. It's not that interesting looking, so I didn't pull it out. But, but this, if you look really closely, you can see it was also a fusion at one point. You'll see here in a minute. Right there. So you can see it was also a fusion at one point. I think all it was, somebody just put a bunch of cuttings in a pot and then they just grew together. I don't even know if it was planned. Who knows? So as part of this bush to bonsai journey, one of the challenges I faced was the, um, the length between the inner nodes, between the leaves. So I've been... So I let it grow out and then I'll chop it down. I'll chop it down a little more each time. And when I do that, it, it forces it to back bud lower, uh, lower down the trunk. And I'm going to keep doing that over and over and eventually reduce the height down to a better height. I could get drastic with it, but I don't really want to. I'm not in a huge hurry. It does take up a lot of room. Maybe I should be in a hurry. But as you can see, it's back budding. So... I'll just let it grow out, chop down more off the top, let the bottom parts grow wild. I'll just repeat that process over and over. Okay, if you're not sick of ficus benjamina yet, here's the last one I'm going to show, uh, at least of ficus benjamina. This is one that I, I'm just taking care of for my kids. I gave it to them for Christmas about five years ago. They said, thanks, Dad. Here, why don't you take care of it? I'm its caretaker. The reason I'm pointing it out, actually, this was a cutting from theirs, now that I remember. Theirs actually died. I was a caretaker and it died on my watch, which makes me a horrible father. But I forgive myself. Hopefully, you will forgive me too. But this was a cutting from it, so it lives on, and I just like it. It's got character. Never mind the stick back there, that's just kind of helping hold one of the branches in, in position. That long one there that I was just messing with, that's kind of an issue. It needs to be wired or cut or something, but it'll leave a big bald spot, so I don't really want to cut it. So yeah, it's got some cool characters, got some good trunk movement down there. I kind of like that little bend in the trunk. It just happened naturally like that, and I'm, I like it, so. Someday, someday kiddos, you grow up and you learn how to bonsai, you can have it back. In the meantime, I'll try not to let it die. Got some more of those little aerial roots down at the root base happening. I don't know what it is about the greenhouse this time around, but it's causing that to happen. Not from the branches, but from lower in the trunk, which is fine. So there it is. You can see the new growth, the bright green leaves. So it also loves a greenhouse. 
And this, last but not least, this is a dwarf. This was my very first dwarf Shaflera that I ever had. Somebody that I worked with when we were moving offices at one point, he said, hey, Toy, you like plants, right? I said, yeah. He goes, oh, here's a plant. It was like six feet tall. I didn't know what it was. I was new with Bonsai at the time, too. This was a long time ago. And finally figured out what it was and did a little research and went, oh, okay, I can Bonsai this. I've been working on it ever since. I'm sort of at a loss with it right now, though, which is unfortunate. Because it is my first one and my oldest Shiflera that I have. I don't love its structure or design. It's kind of a raft a little bit. Kind of a slant. Kind of both. Kind of neither. It's got some cool aerial roots. But it's also got that branch on the left there that sort of goes up and crosses. Eventually I'm just I'm either going to have to wire it or cut it. It can't stay like that. So it's, it's got some issues I don't know what to do with. But that's all my trees in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the update. Have a good rest of your day.